everybody, Mike here with Delta Faucet. Today, I'm gonna show you how to install the Delta Faucet R22000, a multi-choice universal integrated shower diverter rough for a shower. Now, there are two models of this, the R22000 and the R22000-WS. The WS stands for With Supply Stops. The installs are pretty similar for both models, and I'm gonna walk through both of those in this video. Typically, you'd only be tackling this project if you're doing a bathroom remodel that's been taken all the way down to the studs, or you're doing new construction. Now, if you're tackling that complicated of a project, I'm guessing you have some DIY experience. Just keep in mind that every install is unique and building codes are different everywhere. So if you run into an issue or there are any steps of the install that you're uncomfortable with, I definitely recommend bringing in a professional for some extra help. But if you feel good with it, then let's get started and talk about what tools you're gonna need. Then we can move on to the install. Now we're gonna be using PEX for our water supplies, but you can use copper, galvanized iron, PEX, or even CPVC. Okay, grab those tools and supplies and we'll get to it. Now here we are in our rough opening, and the first step is to determine where we want to mount our rough valve. Now there's really no rule exactly about where this needs to go, however there are some considerations that you want to think through before determining its final position. The first is kind of the vertical height, and for me, I like this to be right around somewhere that's easy to operate, so I don't call about my belly button level, so probably right around here around 48 inches off the floor. And then secondly, I also want to consider what else is happening in the shower. Now, for instance, I want to make sure that if I have a shower head directly above it or I have a specific width on my opening, I probably want to make sure it's centered within that opening. And then also I want to consider what the final wall covering might be. So if you're doing some sort of inlay or some sort of large format tile, there may be a specific position. This needs to be mounted to make sure it doesn't interfere with any of those design decisions down the road. And finally, don't forget that there will be a trim that will cover this whole rough valve here that will be a little bit wider, so just making sure that diameter of the trim doesn't interfere with anything else on the wall. So for me, I'm going to kind of have it right around in this stud bay here. Okay, once you get that determined, the next important measurement is where we're going to place our blocking. Now the important measurement here is 2 and 9 16 inches from finished wall. Now again, I'm going to say finished wall because right here I've got my rough framing, so you have to think about what other materials are going to be added to the rough framing to get to that finished wall depth. Now in my case, I'm gonna be adding half an inch of cement board and then about roughly another half inch of tile and thin set. So my finished wall depth is gonna be an inch out from my rough framing here. So what that means is I wanna make sure my mounting block is an inch and 9 16 inch back from the front of my framing. So I'm gonna take my tape measure, go back to roughly where I wanted that valve before, measure back about one and 9 16 inch, make a little reference line, Repeat the same thing on the other side. Again, one and nine sixteenths inch. And right around there. Now that I have those positions marked and I know where my rough valve needs to mount to, I'm gonna cut a piece of blocking that fits perfectly in between these two studs here, and then we're gonna go ahead and screw it in place. Now that I've got my blocking cut to length, next I'm gonna screw it in between my two studs here. Again, keeping an eye on where I wanted that rough valve positioned and also making sure that the front edge of my blocking is gonna be an inch and 9 16 from the front edge of my studs here. All right, I think it's a good idea to put a little level on here just to help me get it perfectly level side to side before I drill my other two sides. And then again, checking to make sure this is an inch and 9 16 back from the front there. Okay, now that we have our blocking in, we can get ready to start mounting our rough valve to the wall itself. But before I do that, I wanna talk through the valve just to make sure we're all on the same page. First off, you notice the valve has a top and a bottom. And I can tell which way is supposed to face up because on the black plaster guard here on the back, you'll notice it has a big arrow with the word up. So I wanna make sure that's always facing towards the ceiling. Secondly, you'll notice at the bottom here, it's got two main inputs, a hot side on the left and a cold side on the right. And then on the top, it's gonna to have three outputs, a left, a top, and a right-hand side. Now, the outputs are important because it depends on what kind of your diverter you're gonna be using. Now, if you're using a three-way diverter at home, that means you're gonna have two outputs. So you have a shower head and like a rain can. If that's the case, you wanna make sure you're connecting those outputs to the left and the top side and 
capping the right side. You always want to make sure you're capping the right side when using a three-way diverter. Now in my instance, I'm going to be using a six-way diverter. That means I'm going to have outputs connected at three different fixtures, so no need to cap anything at this point. Okay, so once I've got the valve figured out, I'm going to go ahead and place it on my wall. And you'll notice I've marked a quick center line here just to make sure I'm getting the valve in the perfect location. So I'm going to go ahead and hold it on my wall, keeping an eye on that center line, and then also making sure everything looks nice and level side to side. Once I'm happy with it, I'm going to grab my drill. I'm going to run a screw in one of the two holes directly below my diverter valve at the top there and into my blocking. Again, making sure everything looks nice and level and driving it into the wall. All right, that feels good and tight, and I'm just checking to make sure it looks level and plumb, and we should be in good shape. So now we can go ahead and make those plumbing connections. But before we do that, I do want to point out that if any of your connections are going to be solder connections, then you want to make sure you remove your test caps, your bonnet nuts, and your black plaster guard, and just set those off to the side to make sure they don't get damaged while you make those connections. All right, I'm going to go ahead and make my connections. You do the same, then come back here, we'll move on to the next step. All right, now that we have all our plumbing installed, we're almost ready to pressure test our system. But before we get to that, there's a couple things we need to check just to make sure we're all ready to go. The first thing is to see if you have water stops or not. Now, there's two versions of this rough valve, one that has water stops and then one that doesn't. Now, I can tell my version has water stops because I have a hole down here by the cold side and one by the hot side on either side of the main mixing valve here. So, if yours doesn't have water stops, no worries, you just get to go ahead and skip to the next step. To install these water stops, they come in two pieces the water stop itself, and then a little retaining nut that holds it in place. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take the stop with the threads facing out in place, get all the way down inside that cold hole there. Secondly, I'm gonna follow it with the nut, and the nut has two sides. You'll notice one side smooth and the other side actually has the hexagon shape. I'm gonna make sure the hexagon shape is facing out. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna hand tighten this down on the stem of that water stop as much as I can and now I need to snug it up just a little bit more. So what I can do is I can use a socket wrench if I have one, and the size of this nut is 3 8 of an inch. And you might be able to get it in there and tighten it up without having to remove anything else. However, a lot of times you don't have one handy, you might need to use a crescent wrench or something similar, so you'll need to remove the plaster guard to get access to that nut to really tighten that water stop up. Now to remove the plaster guard, you're gonna have to remove the two bonnet nuts. The bottom one down here, that just spins right off, and then also the one to the diverter at the top which you also should be able to remove by hand. I'm gonna go ahead and pull those off, set those to the side. Next, the plaster guard, this black piece, is kept in place by one Phillips head screw here. So I'm gonna go ahead and loosen that screw. Being careful not to lose it. And now I can pull the entire plaster guard right off the valve. And now with that plaster guard off, I've got great access to go ahead and tighten up the rest of this nut here. So I'm going to go ahead and do that and then repeat the same steps for the other side. Then we can start reassembling everything and then we'll be ready to pressure test our system. All right, now that I have those water stops installed, the next step is to make sure they're fully closed. And so to make sure they're closed, I'm going to go ahead and use my flathead screwdriver and screw the stop all the way into the body of the valve. So I can check by Go ahead and using the screwdriver, you'll notice it kind of bottoms out there, and that's how I know it's fully closed. I'm going to repeat the same steps for the hot side. It's about like six or seven turns to go from fully open to fully closed. You'll feel just a little bit of resistance, you don't need to over tighten it, and that's how I know both sides are fully in the closed position now. Now that I have those closed, I can go ahead and reassemble my plaster guard and my two bonnet nuts. It's the same steps as before, just in reverse order. Okay, things are looking great. So now that we've got everything back together, we're going to go ahead and use our flathead screwdriver again, and I'm going to unscrew both of these water stops this time, and basically what that does is open up those valves and allow water to flow throughout the rest of our system. So this time I'm going to use my screwdriver to turn those counterclockwise, and again it should be about like six or seven turns until you feel it bottom out, just a little bit of pressure, that's how you know it's fully open. Same thing on the other side. Again, just until I feel a little bit of pressure, and that's how I know it's all the way open. I can also visually check this just because you'll see a bunch of threads on each side. And what those water stops are allowing now is by being open, allowing water from both the hot and the cold side to work through the valve and then to all of our fixtures. So when we pressure test everything, we'll make sure we're testing all of our connections. 
All right, now before we actually do our pressure test, there's just a few more things I wanna check. The first thing is to make sure that my valve body is tight to my blocking, there's no wiggle to it, and that feels pretty good. Second, I just wanna visually check all my connections one last time to make sure everything looks good. Everything looks great on that side. And then finally, I also wanna make sure that my test caps and my bonnet nuts are nice and hand tight there to make sure there's not gonna be any leaking that could happen during my pressure test. All right, everything looks great. So what we're gonna do now is this system's totally ready to have the pressure, the water pressure run through it. And when this happens, I'm just gonna visually check to see if I see any drips at any of my locations, if anything needs to be fixed. And after that, that wraps things up for the installation of this R22000 multi-choice integrated shower valve. All right, I hope everything went well with that install. And if you have any additional questions, you can always reach out to Delta Faucet's customer service team. They're more than happy to help.